If I didn't get no more hours, I didn't get no more pay, I didn't get shit, oh no. I'm getting fucked in the ass. That's what I'm getting. You know what I'm saying? So. Welcome to my video. It is Geisha and welcome to Geisha TV. And y'all already know we finna get into it because y'all click the title and y'all click this video. But a little disclaimer is one, I'm not a makeup artist, so I don't know how to do her. I mean makeup. Two, uh, that, that's what we're getting to the next part. I don't know how to do her. I'm not a her stylist. I just do my own thing and make what I need to make happen for me. And that's just what I'm finna show y'all. But I'm really not even finna show y'all that because how much uh sense would it make for me to actually do the right thing and talk about the right stuff? and not ramble and do all that in this video yeah so i'm just really warning you to be prepared for that be prepared for the clipping and the jumping and the skipping and the stuff but it all makes sense it's all about the same shit you know what i'm saying and don't forget to like comment subscribe and make sure you turn on the notifications and send this video to somebody else because somebody else probably wants to do these same problems or got these same questions or y'all just might want to comment on the same comment down below hey look at the hair but um yeah so Y'all can just get into it, get into me and my conversation, baby. Okay, y'all. Now that we get to this part of the video, it feels kind of weird because I'm staring directly at the mirror. But as you can see, hmm, it's all my whole bathroom. But I'm really going to focus on, hmm, which is going to be just the center part of me. So I can just show y'all what I'm doing and talk and make this as comfortable as possible because I am extremely uncomfortable doing this. One. And two. I just, you know, I just, I just, um, I never really seen myself personally as like a get ready with me girl, you know, come on here, let's do the makeup and the hair things and go like that. But I want to try something new because I'm tired of doing regular old diggle old schmegler, um, story times and fucking life updates and I'm just going to do a get ready with me. So bear with me. This is my first get ready with me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to talk to y'all about what I'm doing. And then I'm going to talk to y'all about topic, the topic at hand. Which is, as y'all seen in the title, HBCU to corporate. I'm going to talk about why I'm doing my hair. My personal experience with a company that I just, yeah, technically I was just fired. That I was just fired from. Then I'm going to talk to y'all about a lot of misconceptions. A lot of stuff that I just really feel like. I got that in my head because I went to a HBCU like just a lot of stuff that I really had on my chest when I first started getting into working and I wish I had like one been there longer to get a, co a connection like a better connection with the African American people that work in the office to talk to y'all more about it but we're gonna get into that we're gonna get into that so right now what I'm doing oh baby I'm wiping my forehead like right where I'm gonna put my front away because I do not want nothing to be right there, no oils, no nothing, just to make sure that your frontal is one gonna stay. Even though I'm putting my frontal on today with some got to be spray, I really don't use my bow hole and all that stuff all the time because one, I like how my wigs be when I use got to be, so I really see a problem with it. And I like the fact that um that you can just take this hole off. Like we're gonna get into the time to get here. So Right now, since that I was gonna talk about basically my relationship with the company when I first started working there. I would say the company, but they are a law firm, so they might sue my dumb ass just in case that they don't like something that I'm saying. So I'm not even gonna get into the do the the willings and dealings of that. And it was a Dallas law firm and it was pretty cool at first, you know what I'm saying? When I first got the job, I was super excited. One, I was excited because I've been wanting to get into like law and stuff like that for a very long time if you really know me you know i'm extremely argumentative i'm gonna stick up for people i fight for people I, i'm that's a natural thing in me so it's naturally a part of how i am so that was like kind of natural for me that was another thing and it was the thing that i wanted to think about going to um get my master's in something legal so I could really work for a law firm for real for real and like you know get into it and be a part of the system so I started working there again as case management it was an at-home job another reason why you know what I'm saying I was like uh boom I need to get this hoe because it's an at-home job and I love at-home jobs because you want you at home you don't have a lot to deal with when it comes to you know 
uh, getting up to get to work, all type of stuff. Y'all know how Bianca been now. So it was really just, it felt like a good deal or a good idea. But that's really the backstory. I basically um, went ahead and took the job. I did case management. Case management at a law firm is basically administrative work per the attorney that you're assigned to. So you work with your attorney, you do paperwork, you do all type of stuff like that. You call the clients and you talk to them about what they got upcoming, stuff that they need to turn in. You're like a middleman in communication. That's what it is. That's what that job really entailed. I was just communicating with people and talking to people that the attorneys didn't want to be bothered with as far as like, you know, if you call in every day trying to see what's going on with your case, if you really know anything about law, you know, that that case stuff is not going to take one day. But a lot of people, like a lot of people think, a lot of people think that that's, that's how it goes. But it's really not, so it takes a good amount of time. So I really kind of was filtering calls and doing different things like that. About this time, I really started falling in a deeper connection with this company because we did stuff like um, docket calls, team meetings on Fridays, they did happy hours. You know that family oriented shit that people be talking about on social media and be like, it's a trick. It's a trick, bitch, but they be talking about on social media. You know what I'm saying? Like all that lovey, lovey dubby, good employee stuff. You know what I'm saying? I want to challenge my uh, second month being there for getting the most like KPIs. And my KPIs was like just a number of stuff that you do. Getting the most KPIs done in my team that week. And I got $200 on my check for that. So, you know what I'm saying? It was a cool little gig. It wasn't just, you know what I'm saying, a little one, two. It wasn't like a regular administrative assistant job. So I was really liking it. Once. I finished doing docket call, which was like, again, two or three months after I got into the company, they made us do this assessment. So let's get to the assessment. So the assessment is basically like an a IQ test, but basically for your capabilities and the, your strong suits at work. It wasn't like a, how smart are you? It was like a, what are you good at? Um, Part of the thing that I did good on, everybody felt like was a waste of time, and that was like a hands on -y section and stuff like that. And you know, I'm very crafty, very hands on with stuff, so that was really right up my alley. But when I tell y'all, my manager didn't think so. When I tell y'all, they were sitting up in that uh that conference room because we was in a conference room or whatever we was sitting up in that conference room and they were just like this is the most uh, unneeded you know what I'm saying you really don't have to um in a law firm it's not a very uh essential shit fuck it's not a very essential position or essential um characteristic to have as a employee blah 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 so they really downplayed what I was best at did I feel a way about it? Yes, but what did I feel a way enough about it to be like, I'm finna quit, I'm finna leave, blah, 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 blah. No, because I felt like we were just taking a little test and it wasn't gonna do nothing, you know, to judge nothing. It wasn't about anything. It was literally just a test to see what we was good at type shit because we was on some team building, doing all this stuff, trying to learn about people and stuff like that in the company. And it really threw me because I'm like, damn, if this is just for that, it really shouldn't matter. Turns out after we get done with Docker Call that they are moving people around. So boom, this is this the moving people around shit. Now when they started talking about moving people around, I wasn't tripping because I'm at the bottom. I just started with the company. I'm in case management. I'm hoping to be moved up. I'm hoping to get a promotion. I'm hoping, you know what I'm saying, for the best, not the worst. I'm not tripping about the concept of using the thing because I did good on the other stuff. I did good in the other areas because I was basically well balanced. That's really what happened. I was very balanced. Like I was good at all of them to a certain extent, except for like one of them. And the, the one that I wasn't good at was like a, a trait for a person who, um, who enjoys stuff like puzzles and shit like that, like mine, I'm not, I'm not into that, you know what I'm saying, so that really wasn't my thing, or, and, but a lot of people was, you know what I'm saying, but for the most part, the thinkers and all that shit, like I did good in those categories, so boom, we moving people around, we doing stuff, we doing this, we doing that, well, they start moving people around, they start doing stuff, they start doing this and that, just as they stated, so, Every, 
everybody was getting offered new jobs. When I say everybody, I mean the people that I know that work there as far as the other people who was case managers. It was just people moving around. But people was moving up to different positions that was going from remote to in office and stuff like that. Now, mind you, keep that in mind. Remote from, from remote at home to in office. And it was cool because it was people that I knew and it was just like, yay, I'm so happy for y'all. Like, I'm not no hating ass bitch, so if you get a promotion, I don't get a promotion, I'm still gonna be happy for you. So that's how I was in the whole situation. Boom, 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 boom. Get all that done, all that done. They turn around and was like, okay, yay, sure, it's your turn. Mind you, this is like two weeks after the doctor call. And everybody else was moving around the same days, like around um the time that we had doctor call like literally probably two or three days afterwards almost everybody that i knew had moved was already in a new position so this is a little late call you know what i'm saying so i'm like all right whatever but they hit me up and was just basically like we have a position in office and we want you to take this position now I was making some decent money there hourly because I wasn't salary based, I was hourly based because again, I just did administrative work. Like, we want you to go from um, home to in office, but we're not gonna, we not giving you no extra hours. That was flag number one. I was like, damn, I'm not getting no extra hours, so I'm, I'm coming to downtown Dallas because that's where the, uh, the location was. I'm coming to downtown Dallas every single day. That's adding gas to my trip. That's adding all type of shit to my, you know what I'm saying, my usual one, two. And y'all telling me I'm not gonna get no more hours. I'm like, damn, okay, so I'm not gonna get no more hours. Let's see if I'm gonna get some more pay. Ask, is there gonna be a raise? No, ma'am. You want me to take a job? Now, again, all this shit was optional, you know? How they offering, like it was an offer. So they were offering me this position, you know what I'm saying? Or you know what, let me just say it was an offer in my head. To me, they were offering it to me. It wasn't a requirement, it wasn't nothing I had to do, it was just an offer because they was like, we're offering everybody or we're offering people new jobs based on their results. Cool! So they offered me this position, I'm basically, I said no, because I was like, that don't make sense, you know what I'm saying? I didn't tell them that, but I'm just thinking to myself, don't really make sense. I'm not getting no more money, I'm not getting no more pay, I'm just gonna be doing the same thing, but now you want me to do something extra as far as coming into the office. So I was like, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that wasn't for me. This nigga, and when I say this nigga, I mean one of the boss manager dudes, he gonna tell me, well, we need this position filled. Put it on Indeed. Like, you need this position filled, put it on Indeed. Find somebody, you know what I'm saying? That's how y'all got me. So, you know what I'm saying? That's how y'all got half my other fucking associates that I know that started right when I started. So, he goes on to basically just start describing that this is the only position that they have available for me. And I start asking questions like, hold on, but I'm hired right now. Like, you talking to me like I don't have a job here already as a case manager working from home, you know what I'm saying? Because they want me to come in office to learn something new. I was not doing case management no more. They wanted me to come into office to learn something new. And I was just like, uh, yeah, like, that's what I want to do. I want to I wanna learn something new. But if y'all not giving me no more hours, no more pay, I'm not, I'm not finna sign up for that shit. I'm not finna be trying to learn something new. And y'all getting over because y'all getting extra work. Y'all getting all this shit done. And I'm basically just getting fucked. Because now I got to come into the office and I got to make all these accommodations to do stuff and stuff like that. So it was basically just like a, I felt like a dead end situation. I thought we was done with the conversation. He said it needed to be filled. I was just like, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't know what to say kind of in that moment. Because I was just like, well, it needs to be filled. Then feel it. You know, that's really where I was at. Cause I was just like, what the hell? You trying to offer me a job that's a promotion? Because that's how he called me. I have some good news for you. I have a promotion opportunity and blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, that's not a promotion. If I didn't get no more hours, I didn't get no more pay. I didn't get shit. Oh no, I'm getting fucked in the ass. That's what I'm getting. You know what I'm saying? So no, I don't want to do that. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not taking that opportunity that you're offering to me. So after that call, mind you, this was 
30 minutes before I went to work that day. So he, cause he hit me up on Slack and if you work in a corporate life, you know, Slack is like Facebook Messenger before you, for the employees. So everybody got each other on a system where they can, you know, send a little, shoot a little text over to you, that type of stuff. So he hit me up on there early and I usually be on there early cause I be on there like either wrapping up stuff or logging stuff in from the stuff that I did the day before. Okay. So he hit me up on there and asked me a question about what my phone number was so he could give me a call and I let him know I slacked him back and was just like, yeah, my phone number is X, Y, and Z. So he called me. Boom. That's how we got to him calling me in the first place. So he slacked me a message. It was just like, um, after all that, after the phone conversation with him, he slacked me a message. It was just like, um, I'm so sorry, Geisha. Um, we're going to have to, um, Get someone else to fill your position, blah, 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 if you're unable to come in office. I'm like, you finna fill my position because I'm unable to come in office, but you hired me as an at-home employee, and now you telling me because I can't come into the office that I'm fired. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and when he said it, I was just like, okay, um... Cause in the moment I was just like, damn, am I getting fired from a job that I like? My job, like this was my corporate job. This was the job that I was like, yes, this is why I'm going to school. This is what I went to school for. Blah blah blah, woo woo, blah blah blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? And this man just took that away from me. So I was just like, or trying to take it away from me in the process of talking to me on the phone. So I was basically just like, okay, so what else can I do? Like, um, it let me. Can I try to make some accommodations to see if I can come in? Cause I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna lose my job. Like, what the hell? And I wasn't thinking to myself how I'm thinking now as far as like that wasn't a promotion. I'm thinking to myself like I'm gonna lose my main hustle and just be dependent upon my side hustle even though my side hustle is a lot of people's main hustle. But I was trying to stack the bread. I'm trying to get a house in January. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to do shit and I'm trying to get the money to do shit and now I lost that opportunity. So again, I'm trying to make accommodations and he was just like, you know what, okay, give me till three. He was like, I'll give you till three o'clock, you know what I'm saying, to see if you can come into office. And when he said it, even when he motherfucking typed it, I, I heard it come out of his mouth. He was just like, when it, you will see, you know what I'm saying, let me know if you can accommodate the situation, blah, 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 blah. Now, at this point, it was 15, 10 minutes before I had to go to work. And every single day at our job, if remote workers and all, we all log on to um, a Zoom call. We log every Monday. We do a Zoom call with everybody in the company, and then every um, every Friday we do a Zoom call with everybody in the company. But throughout the week, you go to your manager or your your own pod. You know what I'm saying? Because we had different pods and different groups and shit. So you go to the meeting for your own personal pod and that's how that worked for you. So you was going to your pod meeting every single day. So your manager would know what you're doing, know what you're working on, tell you what they want you to get done for the day. Yate, blate. So again, this is all before my meeting with my group and stuff like that. So I'm just basically like, okay, um, yeah, so I'm going to just try to make some accommodations on while I'm at work today. I'm going to think on this dumbass conundrum I'm in and blah, 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 blah. And that's really just how I was. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. I really have been talking about my hurt. But I'm doing like this little cute little, little Sally Walker look with the curls. I cut my wig from, it was like down here. I cut it to like right here. One, because the ends is kind of matted or not, but I I'm mad and it's frayed because I've worn it bone straight recently, but I just want that fresh ends look and I wanted a blunt cut with curls, so that's where I cut it. And then I just put it on, y'all yeah, seen literally from mannequin to head, and then this right here was uh, my baby hair portion that I pulled because I re-plucked my wig, but this is my baby hair, so I just basically pinned them up after I just kind of trimmed them down because I'm going to do the uh, arrogant tay with the flip daddy, you know what I'm saying, y'all yeah, know what I'm saying. Is essentially what happened to my job at the law firm I'm not saying you know what I'm saying so I again throughout the process that I was just explaining to y'all was going through the HBCU so corporate life and that's how I got the title to this I, video so I just looked over at my camera and that whole stop recording because I ran out of space on record but I put my phone on there so we're back in action so boom 
we're about to get started on our makeup. Let's get into the get ready room part first, and then we're gonna get into the conversation at the end. So this right here is my little eyebrow spoolie. I'm gonna do spoolie on my eyebrows and stuff like that. I'm gonna prime my face. I do a weird prime. I know y'all gonna see it, and y'all gonna be like, what the fuck? But I'm gonna put the primer on my face. Then I'm going to let that dry a tad bit. Then I'm gonna put a clear, not a clear, but like a looser, lighter, translucent powder. Let's let this one to be more specific. This is not nowhere near my color, but I use this as a base on my face, and then I spray my um finishing spray just as a base layer to make sure my makeup goes on smooth, to make sure it looks good. I think I picked that up from a TikTok a long time ago when TikTok first had got started talking and shit. So yeah, I picked that up from a TikTok. But after I seen it in that TikTok, the girl makeup went from like regular to I don't know, go ahead. So I've been just doing that and then I just do my back, my makeup and then make my makeup look regular. But y'all know, y'all get it, y'all got me. But um, yeah, so let's get into it. I went to an HBCU. Shout out to the Prairie View A&M University. Only place to be. But um, I went to PV, y'all. So at, at HBCU, there's a lot that goes into developing you to get ready for the corporate world. And this development comes from different types of stimulants. And when I say stimulants, I mean it comes from the way your professors talk to you about their own experience. It comes from um, if you're in the College of Business, because that's what I was a marketing major, they, we took a course that was specifically designed for us to help us get ready and get better and get, not get ready and get better, but help us get ready to get into the workforce. And in that course, I pro that's probably the only course one that I've applied since I've been out of school. But in that course, they talk to us about negotiation, all different stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you go to PV, I highly recommend that course, even if you're not a business major, because, yeah. It's just a good class to take. Um, what the fuck am I doing? I ain't proud my face. See, this is why I can't talk and do makeup, but I'm gonna do my best for y'all. But um, yeah, so you take that course and basically you get a lot of mentorship, you see a lot of people, you um get a lot just basically basic training to help you get ready for stuff, stuff that you wouldn't have known if you wouldn't have took that course, like how to negotiate your salary. That negotiating your salary is a, a potential, you know what I'm saying? Um Knowing your worth was a lot of that class as well because they, they discussed to us, they wasn't pushing entrepreneurship, so I'm not going to say that, you know what I'm saying, but they discussed to us about basically knowing that you work for somebody else and that if something happens to you, the only thing that they're going to do is replace you with somebody else. And I kept that and I used that a lot in this in my head in this situation because I was just like, I'm not finna put myself and go out of my way to be trying to run up and hurt every single day to be on time, making it downtown. That's like that was gonna add two hours to my morning instead of me waking up, rolling over, opening my laptop like I usually do. I was gonna have to wake up, wake up again. Y'all know how that shit go. And then turn around and go and get dressed. Be ready, have clothes out, all that type of shit, just to go up there and do something new that y'all not paying me to do after y'all already trained me to do something else, you know what I'm saying? And the money was good, but it wasn't that good. So let me say that too. Like, I know I discussed how I was making good money, but I'm damn near making that same money at Amazon. I literally was on some double my income shit when I got on at Amazon. I was just mainly more so on a tip of this is experience, this is the ground level, this is where I'm, I'm supposed to go as, you know what I'm saying, a new college uh, graduate, blah, 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 you know what I'm saying, all that shit, all that shit, all that shit. So, again, other than that class, like they preached to us was knowing your worth, know your worth, know your worth, know your worth. Like, know that you're not just a number, and you shouldn't be put in a system to where you're just a number or a part of a process, you know what I'm saying? And if you are, then you better be making good damn money. And that was another thing. Like, we had a lot of mentors come in from that class and just talk to us about, you know what I'm saying, sucking, sucking it up and make that money. If that's what you really in the game for. And a lot of people are in the game for just sucking up and making that money. And I'm not, I wasn't there for that because it wasn't my field. It wasn't my study. It was something I potentially wanted to go to school for. So I wasn't too concerned about if I was going to lose my job, if I was going to have my job no more. Yeah. So, again, they told us we was coming into office a few times. Now, all these different few times they told us that we was coming into the office. It was on a monthly schedule. They'll send it out to us and stuff like that. The first time I had to come was in July. Now, when I came for the first time in July, I was basically trying my hardest to not do the, how many black people there, 
trying my hardest not to be the, uh, not to, you know, basically count black people. Because whenever, I feel like whenever we go into a situation like that, we've heard so many times in different scenarios, situations in school, not school, out of school, whatever, you've heard that, you know what I'm saying, they hire black people just to keep keep a look, keep it up, keep a look up, you know what I'm saying, keep it looking diverse in that bit. But I did go and finally had the opportunity to sit down, you know what I'm saying, and look around. It was only a handful of black people. So was that a red flag? No, because I don't set myself up to be in that uh, spectrum of African Americans that are super, that are race sensitive or anything like that. I'm not gonna say woke because that's not what the people who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people who just be like, um, oh, I can't work here if it's only this many black people here. But, bitch, first of all, I'm gonna show, show them, if they trying to hire me, I'm gonna show them that black people need to be up in this office. I'm gonna do my work, I'm gonna work my hardest, I'm gonna do what I got to do to be up in here to show them that it, maybe we should get some more black people in here. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how I was thinking about all of these situations and subjects. Like I need to do my best. Or that's how I felt like I would be in a situation to where I was one of the only black people in the room. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here to count faces and stuff like that. I'm here to count, count paper, you know what I'm saying? Get that, money. These handful of black people, I look around, I'm looking at what position these black people are in, how long they've been with the company. So the girl, the majority of the African Americans that I saw were new employees like me. It was two of us and then it was two more that worked in the company. Now only having four black people in a company that's about 45 plus should be a flag. It should be. And I'm not going to sit here in front like it wasn't kind of alarming, but it just wasn't a pressing matter to where I was going to quit my job. All right, y'all, so I'm going to get around my eyebrows now, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to keep keep letting y'all know what I'm fit to do with the makeup, too. But the next thing that I really was making myself privy of was just all the black people that work here are black women, no black men. When you go to an HBCU or any school, hell, because the numbers are the numbers. There are a lot of women. There are a lot of women everywhere in the world. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the number of women in a room should make a, a the number of women in a room corporately to me says something else about the company and about the culture of the company. Now all the African Americans that worked there were women, but the majority of the firm were men. And that was like a hmm. Majority of the people sitting here in DACA call are men. Majority of these are people have penises. Now, is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. But in my head, I feel like I'm trained to see these types of things because I went to an HBCU, because I know that there's a lot of women that go to college. I know that there's a lot of this and a lot of that. So I was just noticing these things, and that's again why I put the second half of this video because I want to see. Am I tripping? Do other people notice these things when they go to jobs? Or was it just me, you know what I'm saying, in that situation? Only about 75% of the room are men. The man who owns the law firm is, again, a man. Um, and I'm not, again, saying that there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that that's something that I noticed. So let's go down the next thing that I noticed when I was sitting in that room for docket call was the fact that the company had all types of donations and stuff like that. Like they had a poster with all of the donations and different things and and not societies and stuff like that because I don't think it was like any like Greek organization or anything like that. But just the type of stuff that the company overall supports as far as donations. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. There are no black schools on there. No HBCUs. Not all the schools were Ivy Leagues or anything like that, but there was just no HBCUs like a few of the schools I had to look up just to make sure that they're not an HBCU because that's how deep I was looking at the poster like I'm just in there like damn no HBCUs no famous HBCUs you know what I'm saying like there's no Howard on there there's no nothing like that and they have schools from all over the nation so I was just like okay um y'all don't donate to black schools was that a flag no but was it something that I noticed yes because Y'all don't donate to black schools. And I went to a black school, you know what I'm saying? And I was really just, when I got this job, 
I saw longevity there. I, I had it in my head that a part of my plan, basically stacking my bread how I want to or doing the things that I want to do in life because essentially I want to do YouTube and stuff like that full time. I want that to be my money maker. But as of right now, it's not. And that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't there yet. But I really wanted to see myself there for a long time. So I was trying to make sure that I kept my eyes open to everything that I seen, noticed, and saw because it all mattered at the end of the day if I plan on being here for a long period of time. Like, I want to be one of those people saying, yeah, I've been working for such and such for about six years now, blah, 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 because one thing about me, and one thing about a lot of people that I know, I wouldn't even say a lot of people that I know, let me stop saying that, like, everybody I know is like me, but uh, a lot of people that I look up to, they don't work places for a long time. One, because they're entrepreneurs and they start their own shit. But they don't work places for a long time, and that's something that not I want. I don't want to say a character flaw because anytime that I leave a company, it's for a specific reason. I let it be HR, let it be um, a problem that I had there, let it be whatever it was. There's a reason. I'm not just leaving to leave because who can afford that? Not me. So I just going in and basically trying to see myself somewhere for a long time, trying to make a plan, trying to see myself doing something consistently, consecutively for a while that wasn't school, that wasn't, you know what I'm saying, band, that wasn't something extracurricular. Some shit that, you know, I gotta do for the, not for the rest of my life, but y'all know, getting into the work game. So that's another reason why all this stuff is coming up because I wanted to make sure that this company was a right fit for me. We're the number one largest HBCU in the state. So I feel like you should at least know the name of my school or some parts of it like only the only people and i'm serious the only people who were there who knew what prayer view was where it was all that type of stuff were the black people you know again not a problem for me situation of educating i can educate the shit out of you about some pv shit you know what i'm saying what do you want to know i took so many freshmen on walks around the campus to help them understand the school that they go to what do you want me to tell you like, what is it? What do you want to know about the university? Not to say that nobody wanted to know, but it wasn't just like, it was like a, oh, you went to Prairie View? No, or I, oh, what school did you go to? Where did you just graduate from? Oh, I just graduated from Prairie View and m University. Oh, okay. I'm not really sure what that is, but yeah. Boom, starts talking about something else. But that was something that stood out to me. And the fact that I got to the point where I just started seeing shit that was sticking out to me made me question myself like made me question like not why am i here on some dumb shit like that but made me question like why do i see everything like this why is this how i operate when i go into the world you know what i'm saying and i'm not blaming it on pv in this video or nothing like that i'm just saying i'm just trying to see if this happens to other black women that went to an HBCU and went into the corporate life. Did you feel these same ways? Like, did you ever feel like you were in a position to where, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you was looking around the room to just read the room. Like, who is this? Who is that? What is this? What is that? And you notice some of the things that I'm noticing that I'm talking about right now. That's all this video was. You know what I'm saying? Like, the fact that my mind goes there a lot. Like, talking to y'all... Talking out loud, you know what I'm saying? You know how you realize different shit talking out loud. I'm realizing a lot of different shit talking out loud. That basically, maybe that life isn't for me. Maybe I'm not designed and built to work for someone else because I'm not only looking at all of this shit, but I'm, I have so much other shit going on. Shout out to all the people who make these videos on a regular basis and really be in the game with the whole getting ready with me because this is this is hard to try to talk and do this but now we get into the end of this video i don't talked about my common misconceptions and everything i'm about to put my lashes on and i know i can't talk and do this and then i'm gonna fluff these curls out and we're gonna see what the hair and the makeup is talking about because you know this was a hair and makeup you ready with me not clothes because baby i ain't really got nowhere to go <laughs> i just want to go to y'all ah no but <laughs> for real for real it felt therapeutic getting this shit out and talking about it and not on some, I'm talking to my mama, you know, I'm, t I'm just talking. I'm literally just expressing and venting how I feel. So I'll probably do some more get ready with me 
in the future, you know, maybe involve some more clothes because I got some stuff coming down the pipes when it comes to sponsorships and deals and stuff like that. Uh, working with a lot of new companies coming soon, so you know. Alright, so now I did something with my baby hers. We got some very much something something with my baby hairs you know what i'm saying i am about to finish wrapping up this video um thank y'all again for coming here and you know clicking on the video because y'all know your girl be hella thankful and grateful that y'all just want to listen to me talk y'all just want to hear me out y'all just want to understand and learn from a real one you know, not a fake one. So thank y'all again for clicking this video, coming to this video, and wanting to see how I do what I do when I do what I want to. And hearing about my discussion, really comment down below. This is very much so open discussion. I want other people to come read the comments from your comment and have a comment themselves. I want it to be just an open portal to just talk about stuff that people don't talk about like people don't talk about going from an hbcu to corporate life and how it affects you and the shit that you see and your psyche and how it's i wouldn't say fucked up but just mixed up in some different stuff you know what i'm saying because you're trained or you feel a certain way about certain things because those things have been pushed on you or placed on you from other people you know what i'm saying like other people or other situations so thank y'all thank y'all thank y'all comment down below and check me out in the next one. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you turn on the notifications and send this video to somebody else because somebody else probably going through these same problems or got these same questions or y'all just might want to comment on the same comment down below. Babe, look at the hair. But, um, yeah. 